In this video I'm going to show you how I carved this Celtic cross pendant in several locations in and around our home in Abergorlach, West Wales. Hello again, we're hidden underneath a large overhanging beech tree here on the banks of the River Coffee today. It's a stifling hot day and I plan to do some carving. Part of the reason for choosing this location is as you can probably hear in the background the river's quite low at the moment and there's, there's stones here so the river runs over the stones and it makes a lovely sound in the background which is amazing when you're carving. So this is what I'm planning on carving today. This is one of the Celtic crosses that I prepared down at Coombe Tiddy in our last video. It's uh, sycamore wood and as you can see I've worked up a design here. It's pretty small as you can see from my hand. Um, this is going to have a spine that runs all the way down through and across and I'll be taking these out here all the way through and the same across the other way. I'll then be lowering this in here and texturising this in there. So that's the plan. Uh, we'll see what happens on the sides here. I haven't, I haven't designed anything on the sides yet. We'll cross that bridge in a minute. But um, I've done it in the past where I've done something similar on the outside and it looks quite good. So uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. So that's the design carved in there now pretty much. Um, got the cross in the centre here and I've got the spines running down and across. The next thing is to put lower these down and then I'll texturise them. It's day two of the Celtic cross carve. I'm up at the carving bench in the woods. It's early morning, it's really hot. I've been moving around the bench because the sun's coming up, it's getting hotter and hotter. We've had a bite to eat and I'm gonna make a start on the carving again. I've actually done a little tiny bit this morning. But before I actually start carving, I'd like to show you how lovely this spot actually is. So 
So I've lowered this down here. And what originally I was going to do was just do some sort of texturizing in there, maybe with a bradder or something like that. But what I've now decided to do is to try the smallest hatching I've ever tried. So I'm going to try and put little tiny hatches in here and see what that looks like. Obviously I've got to lower these ones still yet. So uh, I'll make a start on that. Right, I'm remarking out these hatches now. Um, the first one that I did that I showed you uh, it was a little bit big and a bit wibbly so what I wanted this to look like is that they're all in line so what I've done is I, I'm using this tractor and I'm using that line and that line so I'm basically to make sure they're all in line lining that line there the 180 line in here and then Oh, let's find that. There we go. And then marking that as my first line. And I'll do the same over here. Now, actually, I can use the edge of the ruler here. That one's out a little bit anyway. And that one back. So that line there and that line there. And then I can just finish off doing these ones at the distance that I want. And what I should end up with is that it looks like it's all in line. Almost as if it was a one piece underneath. That's what I was aiming for. So I'm fairly happy how that's come out there. I've done two now. And I've just got these two left to do. I'm using this chisel to do it. It's a little tiny hand carving chisel. It used to be full size here. But I wanted something really tiny. So I've, um, I've basically ground this down. And the um, the end's now one millimetre in diameter, so it, um, it's just ideal for getting into these tight spots here. I swap the chisel around there. Because I'm using the actual bevel to push the wood out. So if I do it just one side, it ends up... It doesn't really matter on some of this size, I suppose. But um, it ends up just pushing one side and the other side is like a sharp cut. So if you turn the chisel around and go back in again. Lean it into the bevel a little bit. You're pushing over the side so it does leave a nicer, cleaner cut. Just to finish this off. I'm using the bridle just to make some tiny little, but they have to be really tiny. Just to give it a little bit of extra detail. And there. And then I use the rubber just to rub out the, any pencil lines. Yeah, quite happy with that. Marking out now for the next stage. So we're going to do the um, sides in the same way as we've done here. Running down the sides. So what that should leave is quite a nice little um, border on the edge. And then we'll take it round here. And I think what I'm going to try and do is to mark... Um, sink that down and put the same texture in there. I think that looked pretty nice. So just marking out the centre line. And the lines for the edges there. Let me just do that so I can see it. Mark that one. That one. Flip around and make that one easier. That's pretty good. Right, I've 
I've started marking the rest of this out now so you can get an idea of how this is going to um, finally pan out. So it's going to go around the edges. This is obviously going to be the raised spine running down through. I've marked that one out completely and I've marked these ones out just to kind of give me an idea of where they're going. What I find is if you mark it all out too well, the time you um, do it, do this one, you come to this one, you've rubbed some of it out with your hand. So I'll get to that stage, I'll, I'll carve this one, and then as I go round, I'll just remark them in and uh, go from there. <laughs> Right, I've um, had a little bit of a change of mind, which is the nice thing of doing something like this. You can just kind of go, oh yeah, that look good. Oh, 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 maybe that. <laughs> so what I've done is I've um, originally was going to leave it just like this, but I've decided to put these pieces in here mainly because it's going to give me a nice frame here, make this look like it's kind of disappearing into there. So. Um, I made a start on this up here as well. So I'm going to go back over quickly and just put these ones in and then continue on the edge. Hopefully you can see that on camera, but that's that bit finished now, and you can see the, um, I'll move it around a little bit, but the light's bouncing off that now, and it's giving it a really nice effect. So that's what I was after. So we ended up retreating from the carving bench up in the woods, because it got to one o'clock and it was so hot. So we came back, the shaded route, and I went back into our nice cool cottage and done a little bit more in the carving room and um, I'm now at this stage so I've done the sides right the way around on the ends 
done the middle bits all of those are complete and now I've lowered this on top of here and I've penciled in the hatching to be put in there so that's what I'm going to do now so I'll finish that off and as soon as I've done that I'm going in there So that's it, pretty much finished now. So as you can see, I've put these ones in now. All pretty small. So I'll take that back to the workshop, give it a good old clean up, and then put some oil on it, and we'll take some images, and I'll put them on at the end of the video. But now, for that swim. We plan to release a carving video like this one once a week and where possible a walking and outdoor video. If this is something you're into please consider subscribing and we'd love to hear your comments and thoughts on our video so far. Oh and if you like this one please give us a thumbs up. <laughs>